Greetings! David Nielsen here for Third Universe with a board game demo! Today, we're gonna sift through the sands of Forbidden Desert, produced by GameRight. This is a multiplayer cooperative game for two to five players from the makers of the widely popular Forbidden Island. In this game, players are members of an expedition which has crashed in the middle of the desert and they must work together to build an ancient flying machine and escape their fate before they die of thirst or are buried in the sands. Let's take a look, shall we? Before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button. Forbidden Desert consists of cards, land tiles, sand tiles, wooden meeples, a little plastic ancient flying machine. Four flying machine components consisting of sundial, engine, rotary blades, and crystal. Whatever these things are! And a sandstorm meter and stand. It also includes a rule book and comes in a sweet looking tin. The object of the game is to escape the desert. And the way to do that is for the players to find the four components of the ancient flying machine and piece it together and then reach the launch pad. Sounds simple, right? But oh yeah, you're in the middle of a sandstorm. Not fun. That stuff gets everywhere. And while there's one way to win, there are three ways to lose. Dying of thirst, buried in the sands, swept away by the storm. The desert is not a safe place, but with a combination of ingenuity and teamwork, you can survive. Now, to set up, the first thing you need to do is create the desert. In order to do that, you take these 24 desert tiles, shuffle them up, and lay them out in a 5x5 five five grid with a hole in the center. Next, take these sand tiles, take eight of them, and create a diamond-shaped pattern. Uh, make sure when you lay them down that the X side is face down. Next, you need to create your sandstorm meter. Take the meter and shove it inside of the stand like this and place one of these little black thingies and mark your level. Now this game is for two to five people and each combination of players has its own sandstorm meter with two and three on one side and four and five on the other. Also, there are four levels of difficulty from novice up to legendary. So choose your level, place your little black thingy and you're good to go. There are three different decks of cards, the Storm Deck, the Equipment Deck, and the Adventurer Cards. Separate these three decks and shuffle them up. Finally, make sure the Ancient Flying Machine and its four components are within reach, and you're good to go. There are six characters that players can choose from, each one with its own special ability and its own amount of starting water. Take the card, use one of these little black thingies to mark your water level, and start at the top. And that's it. Time to play. Thirstiest player goes first, and play continues clockwise. Now, if you've never played a cooperative game, shame on you. They're tons of fun and far less likely to result in blood feuds. You win or lose together. It's not player versus player, but all the players together versus the game. Therefore, there's no reason not to share all information with your fellow players. No need to keep anything secret from anyone. The players as a team should discuss what they ought to do in each individual turn. However, the final decision rests with the individual player. There's no team leader. And if anyone starts to become a team leader and is hogging all of the discussions, the other players are totally allowed to ignore them completely. On a player's turn, they can take up to four four actions and these actions can be uh, any one of four different things they can move they can remove sand they can excavate and they can pick up a component of the ancient flying machine once a player has done their four moves it is time then to draw storm cards that's where bad things happen but we'll get to that in a moment first let's take a closer look at what your four possible actions are Move is pretty self-explanatory, but with a couple of caveats. You can move north, south, east, and west, not diagonally. And you can't go through the empty space that represents the eye of the storm. Also, you can't move onto or through a space that has two or more sand tiles on it. 
the remove sand action is very important. It lets you, well, remove sand. For one action, you can remove one sand tile, either on your space or on an adjacent space. Excavate. This is what you're in the desert for in the first place. So, when you're on a tile that has no sand tiles on it, you can excavate it and flip it over, revealing which tile you've excavated. We'll go over the different types of tiles in a second. Finally, pick up a part. If you're on a tile that contains one of the ancient flying machine components, you can spend an action to collect it. Just grab it off the board and put it in front of you. Two things you can do for free if you're on the same space as your fellow investigator is share water or share equipment cards. To share water, you move your water level down one and your friend moves theirs up one more. To share equipment cards, you hand them the card. Oh yes, there's a deck of equipment cards, and they do all kinds of cool things. There's a jet pack, there's a solar shield. Each one of these things do something different and very special, but you discard the cards once you use them. So hold on to them until you really need them. How do you get them? You excavate, of course! Excavating allows you to flip over a tile. There are a number of different tiles you may uncover. The most common are the gear tiles, which have this symbol in the lower right-hand corner. Reveal one of these, and you instantly grab the top card of the equipment deck. SCORE! Three of these gear tiles are also tunnel tiles, which allow you to travel from one to the other as long as both tunnels are clear of sand. DOUBLE SCORE! There are also three water tiles. They stand out because they have this little water drop in the corner of their unrevealed side. When you reveal a water tile, every player on that tile at that moment adds up to two waters on their canteen. This only happens the instant the tile is revealed, so you may want to wait until more people are on that tile so that more people can benefit. Luckily, these are easily recognizable because they all have this little water symbol in the corner, so you know which ones they are. Or do you? You see, one of these three is a mirage and has no water, only pain, disappointment, and misery. The most complicated tiles are the part location clue tiles. There are eight of them, two for each of the components. Note, in all cases, the symbol stating which component they belong to is meant to be in the lower right-hand corner. When you excavate and flip over one of these tiles, you're given a clue! And you know either the column or row of one of the components. However, as long as only one of the tiles is excavated, that column or row can move. The instant the second card for a particular component is revealed, however, take the component in question and place it on the tile where the two lines intersect. That's where the component exists, even if it moves away from one of the clue tiles. The last tile is this launch pad tile. Once you've collected all four components of the ancient flying machine, you must make your way to this tile. When all four members are there, you've won! That's it! Fly! Be free! Go home! Or go get a drink, because you're totally parched. All right, now, the storm cards, where joy and happiness go to die. Once each player has played their four actions, they must then draw the number of storm cards as indicated on their storm card meter. And this is where your world gets rocked. Why? Because the game board, it moves! Each storm card, the most common of which will be these wind-blown cards. As you see, they have a number of boxes and an arrow, which indicate how many of the desert tiles move and in what direction, always centered on the empty hole in the center, which, because of these cards, will now start to move around as these cards pile up. For example, you draw this card with two boxes and an arrow pointing up. You would move these tiles one space each in this direction toward the empty space. Note, the empty space has now moved for the next card. If that weren't enough, you then add one sand tile on each tile that moved. Now there's no limit to how many sand tiles can pile up on top of each other, so you'll need to spend a lot of your actions getting rid of these things. A tile becomes blocked if there are two or more sand tiles on it. You can indicate that by placing the sand tile face down so that the X is visible. What if you're on a space that gets buried in sand and blocked? Well, then you're buried. Not dead. Just buried alive! 
basically it means you're gonna have to spend a lot of your actions removing the sand on top of you before you can do anything else. If you draw a wind blows card that you can't do, say the empty space is here on the bottom and you draw a card that wants to move tiles up into it, then you've lucked out. It's a free play. Take a breath and continue. If you ever need to place a sand tile and they've all been placed and there's none left, you lose. Your entire team has been buried in the sands and will remain there for eternity until they are dug up by the next group of intrepid adventurers to come along. Now, two other cards which you will play in fine during your game are the Storm Picks Up card and the Sun Beats Down card. When the sun beats down, everybody takes a drink and lowers their water meter by one unless they're in a tunnel or have a solar shield. If a player is already at zero when the sun beats down, that player has died of thirst and the game is over. The others don't get to continue because they're all so utterly broken by the loss of their friend that they give up and bury their heads in the sand. When the storm picks up, you move the black plastic thingy on the sandstorm meter up one notch. If it ever reaches the top, that means the storm has intensified into something horrific and powerful, and it has picked you all up and flung you to the four corners of the world where your bodies are broken and shattered. Again, you lose. If the storm deck ever runs out, just shuffle the discard pile together and create a new deck. The storm never stops. And that's it. Find the four components and reach the launch pad, you win! Die of thirst, get buried in the sands, or run out of sand cards, you lose! Forbidden Desert is a fun, multiplayer cooperative game that'll take you about 45 minutes or so to play. Perfect for team building or groups with sore losers. The desert can be dangerous, but if you work together, you will build a mysterious flying machine and soar over the dunes back to civilization! We have it in stock at Third Universe, so give us a call or come on down and get your own copy either at the store or on our website, thirduniverse.com. Then you can also check out all the other great games we've got for you. Then gather a group of friends together and prepare to lose yourself in the Forbidden Desert.